This video is going to show you how to do the summation equation for summing up the torques. First off, my example problem, I've got a beam that's at a 10 degree angle with a horizontal, and that does not matter in terms of the calculation. Only thing that matters is that the forces, the A, B, C, D, and E, are all of some perpendicular distance to the pivot point, which is located with the red arrow. So that's at the base of force B. All right, so E is fine. It's perpendicular to the pivot point, three meters away is the perpendicular distance. And force A is fine. It's two meters away from the perpendicular distance to the red arrow. Um, B is actually zero meters. We'll see it. That's not going to do anything. And C is three meters, and D is five meters away. And those are the perpendicular distances. But C and D aren't perpendicular to the distance. They're at some angle, 60 degrees and 40 degrees. So that's the first thing I need to fix. To do this, I'll make D the hypotenuse of a right triangle, and find the opposite side as D sine 40, and the adjacent side as D cosine 40. Now the problem here is this is an extended free body diagram, so I need to slide D sine 40 along the beam to where it actually acts on the beam. It doesn't act where it's drawn now, it acts over here where D touches the beam. And I'll do the same thing for C. So C is the hypotenuse, and I have C sine 60, C cosine 60, and C sine 60 again needs to move along the beam to where C acts on the beam. So now I've got it to where C touches the beam, so I'm good to go. At this point, C and D, the black vectors that are drawn, they go away because they're now represented by their components. So there's a little bit of motion there, sorry about that, just kind of roll with it though. But they go away, so I'm dealing with just their components and that describes C and D, so I'm good. All right, first off, proper form. Um, do a little part of a circle. It looks like a backward C with a plus in it. That means that that's the rotation is counterclockwise. So anything that rotates counterclockwise, we're mathematically saying that's a positive moment. And then the si capital sigma for summation, Greek letter tau for torque, and then the subscript B because I need something to indicate where the pivot point is and or the axis of rotation. And that's going to be at location B. And all that's going to equal to zero because it's not going to speed up and rotate around faster and faster. And because we're doing equilibrium problems, that's going to be true the whole time we're doing these problems. It's a given that in this case, it's always going to equal zero. And that equals the summation setup. So let's look at that. For the summation, the first thing I need to do is figure out if my torques are positive or negative. So I'll use my pencil test. Here's the pencil. Here comes my dog. It paws at B and a paw at E. So she's going to hold B still and pull down in the direction of E and cause the pencil to rotate. That is a positive moment when she does that, or a positive rotation. So that means that my torque when I calculate it for E is going to be a positive value. So plus the force is E and the distance is 3 meters from the red arrow where the pivot is. Now I'll continue this process for the next vector and that's going to be A. So again, pencil test. Here's the pencil, here are the dog paws. And so if he's going to push up in the direction of A, then that's going to be a negative rotation. So when I calculate my torque for A, it's going to be a negative value. So I'll write negative force, which is negative A times 2 meters. Now I'll continue this process uh, for B. Now B doesn't have a moment arm. It's directly at the pivot point. So it's going to be zero for the distance. In other words, it's not going to have any effect causing the beam to rotate. The same thing's true for C cosine 60 and D cosine 60. They point towards or away from the pivot point. So they don't have a moment arm. If they don't have a moment arm, they don't cause a moment. So they won't cause the beam to rotate. So really C cosine 60 and D cosine 40, they're not going to be any part of these calculations. So they're not going to be part of the torque calculations. I'll just ignore those in the next steps. So these two are the ones that we're going to ignore. All right, so let's talk about C sine 60 and D sine 40. Let's do the pencil test. Here's the pencil. And the dog paw is here at C sine 60. She's going to pull in the direction of C sine 60. And we can see that that's going to be a negative moment or a negative rotation. So that means that my torque when I do the calculation is going to be a negative C sine 60 times the distance, which is 3 meters. And the final one for D, I'll put D up, put the pencil test, I'll have her push in the direction of the force, and I can see the pencil rotates in a positive moment with a positive rotation. So the next torque calculation will be a positive force times distance. So that's going to be a positive D sine 40 times 5 meters. And that's my expression for summing up the torques. 